Hello, hello, hello. Today I'll be going over the tier 8 British heavy tank that's called the Caliban. You all probably already know what kind of meme tank this is, but the first time I saw this tank I was like, huh, so this is gonna be a tank destroyer. Hmm. So I scrolled through my garage and I was like, wait, it's not a tank destroyer, it's actually a heavy tank and it has three crew members super weird layout as well for the crew members so it's it's <laughs> it's kind of off with that already and then you have this one whole minute of reloading nonsense oh okay 55 seconds fine fine 55 seconds 56 seconds reload for you to do two shells and you kind of want to just single weave it one shell so you have this weird heavy that's it's not good at anything and or just have high alpha but hey it's a big beam this tank and it's it's just here to cause madness <laughs> absolute madness you already see the gun handling of this thing it's it's come please help me this is a lucky shot straight up just a lucky shot Oof. then i've got that in on that tank to say a little bit about the tank it took me 160 games to get my first ace on it. 160 games it took me to get my first ace tanker. But the overall feel for this tank is, I want to say it's a bad tank. It's a bad tank. It's hard to really put much for you to use. I mean, yeah, like this right here is perfect this is pitch perfect we have four targets in front of us none of them can really push into me i can sometimes peek and sort of uh, use the the hull down to my advantage and uh, essentially this plays into my book of this tank now this works for me and we have an e center five is three oh we go for the is three and we got that as well a little bit lucky as well Oof. oh whoa, 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 whoa. But to talk about the gun, the HE, which I'm barely using while I'm trying to three mark this tank, is 180. Yeah. Oh, we're getting some spotting here. This is also kind of rare, but we're getting some spotting. But it's 180 uh, pen with the HE, but the Alpha is 850. So you can literally, literally blow up tier 6 like nothing. Same thing with tier 7s, even some of them, you can just insta kill them. And the AP that I'm using, you have 292 pen, which is ridiculously high for a tier 8. It's ridiculously high, but you have a 600 alpha. I say but there. The 600 alpha is still massive to consider. The dispersion is 58. No, I did not lie about that. I did not make up that number. It's 58 as a standard. That's what you begin with. And here I am going for the double, and now we got a 55 seconds reload. So I guess we can sit back, enjoy our coffee, while we're reloading this this 58 standard dispersion. I'm saying that again, 58. It's worse than some artillerists, actually, to be honest. I managed to to, to get it down to a 48 or 48 with the with these this equipment that I'm running. We'll go over more about the equipment and such in the garage. You do have a gun depression of 10, which is surprisingly good. It doesn't feel like 10, but it, it actually does have minus 10. And as you can see what I did there, I lift up the gun. Uh, so I didn't just peek normally. And that way I will raise up the spotting point of the gun. And that way I can spot the E-75. But he cannot, you know, shoot me back into damage on me. Shooting my cupola, for example. So that's why you're gonna see me race up the gun. I'm hoping the artillery may be gonna, gonna shoot the 75 But hey, we got a spot in the Visa 120. And texture. Nice texture we're gaming. I hope we're gonna fix that one day. <laughs> like that's gonna happen. The mobility. Nice drop kill on the IS3 here. The mobility of the tank. You have a 33 top speed, but only 12 in reverse, so you are so slow when it comes to reversing away. You have to be really sure you're gonna go for the for the attack. One of the must things is that we do one R forward before we're gonna attack, not the 
leap forward because that's when your tech gun blooms out. And this speed, you, you kind of get up to really easily. The tank is not too heavyweight. It's a 43. No, sorry, it's a 40.6 ton. So it, it, it that is actually kind of heavyweight, but it doesn't feel as heavyweight because it's so compact and small. The tank. I mean, small and good, but works. And another thing I need to touch upon is the armor of this tank. You have a weak spot, which is the cupola on the right side, and then the lower plate. The rest is actually quite formidable armor. It has a roughly 250 turret armor, which is very strong. And then 130 hull armor, which is very angled. So the lower plate and the cupola is the only thing that you really have to shoot in this thing. But oh my god, you have roughly 35 hull armor. So when artillery hits you, they will most likely pen you. You will be lucky if they don't pen you. Like as soon as they hit the hull, oh my god, I've been penning this tank left, right and center by artillery. But any type of artillery, everything from SU-8 to a T-92. So, you know, oh no, GC as well, Conqueror GC, M-4043, SU-14. I mean, you name it, that artillery have penned me probably. <laughs> Ouch. So this tank is very receptive to artillery. Oh, and Batshot says hello, but we have a nasty hello to him. <laughs> Batshot gone. And another thing you might have seen on the minimap is that I do not have full view range with the standard equipment on this tank. Very close to it though, but I do not. You need to have a bounty ventilation, I think it is, and then you're gonna have a full view range. That's how little it is. You have a base view range of 370. And this tank is riddled with... I, I don't know how to describe it, but this weak ammo rack. It goes off very quickly. You have a weak uh, fuel tank, or you set some fire rather easily as well. So you have to really watch out for that. And well, when you have a 55 second fully reloadable seconds, like 55 seconds for a full reload, you do not want to be ammo racked because the first shell will be over 70 seconds. Holy crap! That was the longest time I've ever waited for a shell. My god. Well, what you do have is 360 degrees with the turret, which is, I mean, it's better than the FV4005. So you can actually look behind and look sideways. And you do have a very bad uh, gun depression in the back. You can see there's a huge, huge ventilation part of the tank there in the back. So you cannot look behind you without gun depression. You have to only look forward or sideways. There we go, let's go and check out some post-game statistics, and then we hop into the garage. And as you can see, we did a 4,497 damage, 1,621 spotting, with two kills, a high caliber, ace tanker, but most importantly, we three marked it on this map as well, and on this match. Ooh. Was this a tough, this was a tough, 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 tough three mark. And we had a base raw XP of 1583. At the moment, to, to ace it is 1500, uh, just, just, just about 1500. In a detailed report, we managed to receive 95,000 credits in that game. And there is full AP spam with some various bonuses around us. But anyway, that is for my post game. Let's go into the garage. And like always, we go over the crew, the equipment, shells, consumables, and field modification. Let's start with the crew, because this is the big thing for it. Since it's not a tank destroyer, it's a heavy tank, you kinda need to use one of your heavy tank crews. But this tank is quite the opposite for any other British heavy tank out there. But if I would have to pick for just this tank, I would pick the crew like this. The commander, brothers in arms, six cents, recon, camo, and then repair. What's very tragic is that the commander is the gunner as well. So as the sixth skill, I would pick the snapshot. Snapshot is probably gonna be really good for this tank, actually. But that would be my sixth skill. But 
my god, who has six skills always lying around? I say up to max to five, but those are essential that you get with the commander. The driver is Brothers in Arms. Smooth ride as we have Christmas music going on. <laughs> what, what did I say? Brothers in Arms, smooth ride, concealment, repair, off road driving, and then clutch breaking. Clutch breaking. Oh, that's six skills, but those five skills I will go for first. With the loader, it's Brothers in Arms, concealment, repair. Hello, it's Brothers in Arms, Situational Awareness, Concealment, Repair, and then Intuition. Intuition might be quite the dark horse here, because it's kind of bit kind of nice to be able to switch over to quickly 1 HE or quickly 1 AP, depending on what the target is ahead of you. Or that you know you're going to have this um, pseudo 30 seconds of break, where you know you can, oh, I can easily have HE here for this target. For the equipment, it's two types of equipment. I would like to call this the sniper, and that I later come up with was a better equipment for me, the way I play. So the sniper equipment would be the oh, ambusher, not the sniper. Sorry, sorry, bad habit. It's an ambusher equipment that I'm using. This ventilation, improved uh, aiming or accuracy, I like to call it, and then vertical stabilizer. For the other type of equipment, the sort of mobile tank that you want to create a little bit more rush or breakthrough is turbo IRM improved rotation mechanism and then a vertical stabilizer but for me marking I like this one way more for ambusher and setting up good ambushes and I get that lower amount of dispersion for the shells this is all up to you if you are gonna have a derping time, I would say load up the HE, find those pesky small targets, and try to hit them with this very low shell velocity of 354. But the AP, you have a 500 shell velocity, so you have a slightly higher chance of hitting. But, oh man, it's, it's very slow, the shells. Extremely slow. But to be more reliable, load up the AP. Consumables, you must have the food. This potting and tea changes drastically for this tank. If you don't have it, you are... It's like losing a whole tank almost. <laughs> Ooh. But to, to show the different type of setup I have, this is for, you know, more softer targets. I normally did not play this at all, only in the beginning, until I saw this was more reliable and just using the AP. For the field modification, you go with the all terrain. Because this is just maintaining speed across all terrains is just so much better than the whole traverse minus that you get. The next one is obviously aiming circle. We're gonna have a horrible aim time anyway, so it doesn't matter. Make it smaller. And the next one, this is a must because you need the view range. And yes, when artillery hits you, it's gonna pen you. Oof, so many times, but we will survive. And obviously for the second slot category we pick firepower so both our builds are getting the bonus of it what to say about the caliban it's a harsh tank to play but it's a fun tank to play as well if i got this tank i would not think seriously about it i would go in derp around who cares that's that's pretty much it that's pretty much it like oh I guess that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. Kind of abrupt ending, but hey, what can you do? I hope you liked it, and I'll see you around.